Hello and welcome to an episode of Casual Friday. I'm here with the duck. As always, the show is brought to you by Wu. Links available in the description below. Don, I can see the comments now to the effect of, oh, of course these two come back when the market is down. Fucking dumb, LARP, scamming, <laughs> bear card, European retards. So I, I, what's your defense to that claim? I, I mean, it's been like, it's been really funny because I like, we haven't done the Friday show in a while. That's mostly people, my fault, by the way. Yeah. And people were like in my comments all over and be like, how are you don't stream because the market's <laughs> up and like, dude, dude, it's not, it's not me. <laughs> this is, uh, this, this time it's cred, but this um, time it's me. Yes. My apologies. Uh, I take full responsibility. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we have, we have, uh, an image now, right? So you, you gotta, you gotta show up on the red day. So more so than <laughs> on the green day. Yeah. Fully appreciate, like I fully embrace the the role that we have to play. Uh, it's okay, I'm done. It's an unfortunate role in the ecosystem. That said, it's not like that much has transpired, really, right? Like oh, we had the Trump fucking thing. ranging, yeah, it's, yeah. It's still the same shit. I mean, BTC is at 63k for goodness sake. Yeah. Uh, altcoins, it's the alts. It's, it's the alts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alts look, alts look a bit rough. I mean, to be fair, when I've been browsing Twitter, even when I haven't been active and been dealing with consecutive family crises is one way to describe it i'm looking at it and it's just like solana pump and dump meme coin wallet pnl screenshots and then it's like some cat cabal coin and then that's it and then maybe like like an eth trade on the five minute time frame or something uh there really hasn't been that much just normal altcoin trading or high cap liquid whatever stuff it's just no one gives a shit anymore you know and so yeah. then you look at BTC, which is like at the same price it's been at for four months. ETH, which has continued to disappoint post ETF. And then altcoins essentially been bleeding on the high caps and then pump and dump slash cabal coins on the Solana e ecosystem. It, it kind of raises the question, what exactly am I missing out on? You know? Um, yeah, you're missing out on losing all your money. I think like legit. Yes. And I'm not, I'm not joking. Like I think like 80% of the participants that are active, active, have lost basically all their gains yes like i i'd be shocked if it, if it wasn't like uh if it wasn't like that um just by generally like reading the comments and just reading like seeing how people are doing uh i think like uh, they're down bad and it's kind of crazy we, i don't think we've had this before with bitcoin in a range at all-time high right because for yes. me 60k still all-time high range right like Sure. Like 63K, that might as well be all time high, which is nuts to think about that like a bunch of people are down 80, 90, 100%, maybe even, uh, even though we haven't really <laughs> moved uh, at all on on Bitcoin. Oh, some but, of these liquidations, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And on altcoins, especially. And also, this, this is by no means a shill, but just from like breakout stuff where we can see basically profitability per symbol, per account, etc. Dude, it's, it's been a rough few weeks. <laughs> um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I mean, there, few weeks for traders. Like, there is, there is this like uh, competition going on. Have you seen where like CL and Satstar and like a bunch of other? Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I haven't it. checked it though. How's it going? Oh, everyone is liquidated, and, and the, <laughs> like they all started with 10k, right? Yes. So, like there was like I don't know, like 12 people starting with 10k, and they're all like uh, the the poster children of trading on on CT, sure. right? Like. Suzu's in there, of course. Uh, like a bunch of people, post basically. a child of some sort, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the the popular accounts anyway, right. and um, yeah, I mean, I think like eight out of twelve are liquidated. Uh, CL is like up ten percent, based, I think, um, and that is literally she just didn't trade <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he took one trade, I think, like. And, and just basically close that the moment you got a little bit of profit in. Yes. And um, and basically everyone else is down. I think he is number one right now with like a 10% gain. And 80%, like eight out of the 12 are, are liquidated and the rest is down to Amazing. basically nothing. Um, and I think that describes, obviously, and I'm not, I'm not poking fun at these people that are trading in, in those competitions. Because, because what you have to realize is that when you trade these competitions, you don't trade like you usually of do, course. right? Because you, you're trying to win it. And to win it, you have to take much more risk than you usually would. Or take and, none, apparently. <laughs> yeah, or none. Like, I legit think when 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 the competition is just 10 people or something, uh, you're going to be top three if you don't trade, like in almost <laughs> any competition. Um, it's just how it is. Uh, just people are... 
I'm never gonna do that. I I, I would have loved to be like invited to that trading competition and then just not take a single trade and actually win the thing. Do you um, remember there was like a bet between two crypto Twitter people in like 2018 or something? And they set up like the whole buy bit, read only API, etc. Uh, yeah. And one of them just like straight up didn't trade and then the other At guy all. just blew up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, I remember. And I think that's genius. This is how it how it how it will go most of the time. So I'm not I'm not poking fun of them, no, no. but I think it does show kind of like the, the market conditions have been rough. Yeah, right? it's been like, a story been, of the market for sure. Yeah. I also it's think it's been like a particular it's been hard for sure. And I also think it's like a very good cautionary tale in terms of chasing the market like chasing the market price wise and then justifying it with a narrative after the fact right yeah. um because we've seen that with like the strategic reserve trump is gonna win the election whatever stuff uh, and then so you know people just chase the market higher and then to make themselves feel better they come up with some reasoning that oh, okay this makes sense because it was actually the front running of xyz and then when that doesn't turn out to be true uh that open interest especially if it's like very short-term news based it, it doesn't tend to be sticky at all and gets gets flushed out very quickly like if you manage to come up with or spot a narrative early and then take the trade on that basis that can work i just think that's a lot different than chasing price or just like positioning for momentum and then coming up with explanations after the fact, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think there was a lot of that going on. Um, th there was also like the sentiment shift as always has been pretty extraordinary from around the Bitcoin conference, just being like, oh my God, like US nation state, you know, Bitcoin is a nation state asset and the game theory implications and so on and so forth. And now we're back at fucking 63K and there's like a one week difference between those events, you know? Yeah, um, and people are completely like it's the sentiment has completely shifted again. Um, like, I don't think people are super excited about <laughs> about Trump, um, Trump kind of making Bitcoin the next big thing anymore. They're just terrified that this range is going to break down. Um, and nothing's really happened, right, at the end of the day, uh, like grand scheme of things. Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at monthly, for example, still yeah. the funniest time frame in the world, right? Just like four or five months of basically doing absolutely nothing. And that's the painful thing. If you sort of realize that BTC has been one of the strongest performers this entire cycle. And if you'd basically done nothing this entire time, you can pay your P&L to basically getting flat around that time or just holding your BTC versus all your trading and rotations and trading fees etc it's probably a very painful picture you know uh and as always one of the main culprits of portfolio uh bleed has been eth right the whole yeah. etf rotation etf inflows whatever that, that once again eth found the way to disappoint basically uh as far as that trade went so before we jump too far ahead of ourselves um let's talk about the main btc time frames i think the weekly and the daily probably most relevant at least for this yeah. show monthly you can watch back any of the last like 12 episodes <laughs> uh, and it'll be the same analysis i think the weekly is actually quite interesting um i lo I, I sort of bear tarded it on monday markets just based on market structure where it seemed like the market was making sort of lower highs had the risk at least of making lower highs and lower lows like, yeah. especially after the post 60K break, I was like, well, this could be a break in market structure and the risk. And funnily enough, we actually discussed this before 60K got reclaimed, right? Uh, the yeah. argument at the time was, look, reclaim setups are really good, but you always have to know what it looks like when your sort of pattern gets fucked over, basically, or invalidated. And we talked about reclaim setups and the biggest risk to those setups essentially being you're focused on the range and the range reclaim, but instead the, the sort of dominant price narrative becomes market structure. So you, you get to, you, you know, you're above water for some portion of the trade if you're buying the range low reclaim, but instead of traveling all the way to the other side of the range or even breaking above it, uh, the best you get is a lower high and then it just bleeds back down again. Uh, and that's basically where the market found resistance, right? Sort of around the lower high level on the weekly, uh, yeah. and around, you know, 68, 69K, whatever. Uh, and now I think, at least on the weekly time frame, we're at the last ditch uh, weekly support, which is the FUD cluster that we've sort of mentioned on this show previously. What do you think of the weekly? Do you think the weekly bearish market structure argument has any weight? Are we at weekly support? So you should be going all in to buy. What's what's the view here? Uh, I think it's really hard to say. Um, I generally think, um, and we we have both. Like I think market structure is bearish, but also we have a range reclaim, right? And so we're in this weird area where if you kind of pick, can pick again. And I, I hate when this is the case, right? Because 
it's again like both arguments are quite valid especially now that we got rejected this heavily from from the third lower high um but we are in an area of, of support right now at 63k and i think as long as that holds uh the, the range reclaim argument stands it's just if that starts to like if we start to lose that i think the the range reclaim argument gets worse and worse and then um the market just looks like shit. it looks like a downtrending market at that point um so i'm not saying buy or sell um i'm saying we are at support if you're bullish i mean this is literally for me the last place uh, where it makes sense um and if you're bearish i mean fair enough you know, lower highs it's not that great so it's kind of the situation where i think both both sides have good arguments and um you kind of have to pick pick and choose good thing is you don't you don't always have to right like i i don't have to to be like oh yeah i think this and that will happen because i i just don't know we'll see we'll see what happens basically is, is my view very, which is entirely very useless <laughs> yeah but... we'll see what happens i mean by definition yes <laughs> yeah, uh, is yeah, there a but... specific weekly close that would make you skew you know your, your argument is that both positions are more or less equally plausible which makes it tricky yeah. sort of range reclaim plus support versus lower high uh is there a weekly close that would shift the balance essentially between those two yeah i mean if we if we lose 63k um properly okay I think at that point it makes more sense to I, I still like I mean we still have 60k support at that point um, your favorite level you've never once flooded it in your entire yeah, life you've always yeah. bought it every single test I think it's better now than it was before the breakdown but it's still shit <laughs> <laughs> so so we're kind of in this like I, I generally think the, the the range free claim argument gets worse if we if we lose that okay um but uh yeah i mean i'm glad i don't have to take a position like if it completely if if the range reclaim is false and we go down right like i think both of us probably agree that we're gonna go below 50. um like if this whole if this range is is a bearish one and if the range reclaim was a false a false one i think that's two really bearish signals yeah right? lower high into lower low invalidating yeah. the reclaim yeah i mean that that's kind of bad and then i mean i think you have to target below 50k yeah 12k um, i agree completely <laughs> you, you said yeah. it not me and <laughs> people would actually believe it no but you would you would aim for like 44 i think that's kind of the and i think that, that at that point it'd be very easy to be bullish right like i don't really think uh, at least for like a big bounce um depending and depending on macro right and this is kind of oh, shitty God. but i think we're back in that we're back in that situation because macro is gonna be the center of attention now that we have like people are talking about uh, American recession all that kind of stuff and I think that's going to lead to a bunch of volatility um, that will basically especially given we've been in the range for so long on, on Bitcoin and crypto has generally been underperforming yes. like uh, I think that's going to lead to a bunch of people basically taking positions based on the S&P because they have no idea where this, this Bitcoin goes. But if they hear like recession, um, they might like just short the thing, like short Bitcoin because they're like, OK, if the S&P actually like if the S&P and the Nasdaq and just generally everything goes down, uh, crypto is going to be hit harder. And then you're going to see a bunch of squeezes to the upside. You're going to see like a bunch of weird price action, basically. Um, so we, we kind of depend on macro on, on that front a little bit. Well, again. It's always the cursed correlation, though, at least recently, where we've had a fraction of the upside capture, but like all of the downside capture. At least it feels yeah. that way. That's not a quantitative study by any means. But you remember those days when Nasdaq was oh, yeah. printing a new all time high like every single day, NVIDIA, etc. And BTC has been sideways for like five months or whatever. Yeah, so. I mean, it doesn't help that we have like every time we we kind of break out of the like we actually have a good move from crypto against the traditional markets that like either you have Gox coins <laughs> moving, Germany selling like every single time something happens. Um, and there's only so much a market can take, I think, like I, people are always like, oh, yeah, these coins have been absorbed or whatever. Right. Um, but any coin that has been moved recently can just be resold again. Right. Like the, the older coins that have been just kind of chilling for like five, ten years, those people are probably not going to move or sell their coins. Um, but just because like someone bought the, the, the coins um, doesn't mean that they cannot also sell it. Right. So um, 
if too many of these events happen, right? At some point, you run out of the buy, like we run out of bias, and then shit hits the fan, and then you find new sellers too, right? Because this is the funny thing about just general markets, right? Like when the market moves slower, sometimes you find more sellers than than buyers lower, just because people are like in position and they're freaking out and they're like, "Fuck this." Um, price is lower. I don't like it as much anymore. Um, which is when you think about it logically quite stupid, right? Because you should like it better at lower prices, but it's not how the human mind works. So, um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting one, but I, I'm not picking sides right now. Yeah. I also think one, one narrative that's slowly becoming tired is, well, this is bad news. Look how well it's been absorbed. I think that's always like a short term indicator, but there needs to be follow through on the, on the other side of it, right? Yeah. At least in my mind, it's a two part process where the initial impact of bad news is shit, but the actual part that matters for the trade is that it goes up afterwards. Otherwise, you have bad news, quote unquote, absorbed, and then you keep repeating that pattern. But if the market doesn't go anywhere, then at best, it kind of just neutralizes the bearish news, but at worst, it's just not doing anything positive right it's kind of bearish that the so-called absorption can lead to a push higher because the yeah. entire premise of bad news gets absorbed i think from a mi micro structure point of view the, the sort of implication there is that participants sold the news expecting the market to move the market didn't move in their favor and now they're trapped and will be forced to you know buy back or cover their shorts or chase the market higher whatever it is right but if the market stays around their entry, then suddenly that impetus for urgency just fucking disappears. Like if I sold some news and I think the market looks like shit and then, yeah, maybe I thought it would go down, but it kind of just meanders and doesn't really go up either. I'm not going to feel as much pressure uh, as if I as I would if I were to sell the news and the market just like wicks one dollar in my favor and then moves like, you know, five percent against me. I think when you're dealing with trapped trader type setups whatever the logic be it technical or news based or whatever you kind of need there to you need that for there to be pressure in the first place to get those people off sides to puke and for that to turn into you know trap buyers turn into sellers trap sellers turn into buyers etc but but you need the market to actually move against them for that conversion process to take place uh, and i think a lot of this news related stuff has done well on the early side that yeah this is bad news and ostensibly the market has held up well but it hasn't really followed through to really put those positions under pressure and give us the type of uh squeezes that we're used to if anything most of the squeezes that we've seen is uh, have been sort of news based uh, and or just really really aggressive ramps up in open interest in perpetual specifically just like you know aping I think I covered it on Monday markets. It was like a 15% increase in open interest on a 4% price move, you know, like that type of stuff. And yeah. that's not the type of like strength you want to see in the market because those really aggressive per positioners, uh, they tend to be the first lot to jump out as soon as they're $1 underwater. Like that's a very sort of finicky, jumpy group of traders and they're not going to be your uh, iron-handed base of holders, so to speak um but honestly like you know don there's a world in which this entire discussion is like trite and arbitrary because you know oh impact of news ta this that and the other but like this thing is really done from a high time frame point of view fuck all for like four or five months now you know yep. and every time it goes low it's like oh this is scary what if it breaks down every time it goes high it's like ah oh, you know we've shaken off all the bad stuff here come the all-time highs you know we spent enough time consolidating but like no one is happy uh, when the market <laughs> just continues to do this and there's ultimately no resolution i think whether they know it or not most crypto traders are essentially like momentum traders uh, or depending on what the trend looks like, just like trend followers. And when you get a market, that's all it does is kind of fake out, bleed, fake out, bleed, fake out, bleed. Like very few people make money on that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I 100% agree. Like, it, it's just, I mean, we're trading in range. Um, <laughs> and and this, all of this price action is just kind of what comes with trading in the range. Sure. It's just been that this one has been a little bit special in, in regards to just fucking people over especially yeah. hard right like there's been more fake outs and more mm -hmm. just just shitty price action <laughs> i would say um, it's, also, it's been very long as well and as you mentioned it was it's very close to the all-time high which just makes it so weird um yeah and... i mean just looking at the monthly what the fuck is that yeah chart? it's weird like, it's weird and I, I i don't know what to make of it like it, we had this kind of price action before um when you when you check in 2019 right um, before COVID, basically, 
where like we had a bunch of monthly candles that were quite close together and um, i mean they got at least close to the all-time high close right but we've never had like this kind of consolidation above the all-time high uh, the prior all-time high um and then not do anything like that's just like it's 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 a weird state that we're in and it's also like one thing that we cannot forget um is that we now have like a bunch of people like the etfs right we have the etf um the etf traders that might not be fully native at least like i know that there's a lot of native people trading these um but there's also a bunch of people that um, come from outside of the space so obviously it makes it makes a little bit of sense that the market is trading differently than it has in the past but that also doesn't make it easier right now that we have uh, just flows that we're not really accustomed to and then you have to think about okay uh, you have uh, you have outflows on the Bitcoin ETF, but you have inflows on the ETH ETF. And then like, what does that mean? And like, it starts getting so complicated. I think the, the, the market is just turning harder and harder with every year. Um, and um, yeah, there's one, one of the reasons why it's just trading so odd now in comparison to the past. Yep. That all of that makes sense. And I even remember in the early stages when we kind of tapped the all time high and pulled back, the existing data set was basically, yeah, you know, sometimes it takes a week or like two weeks and there's some like jitters before the all time high. But that, you know, the, the all time high shakeout from the over leveraged breakout buyers tends to be a buy. It resolves pretty quickly. And then you actually start the trend forming portion of the all time high break. But I don't think five months qualifies uh, <laughs> within those previous examples anymore. It's, it's quite clearly its own unique beast at this point. None, none of the yeah. previous analogies, I think, are applicable. Um, the daily time frame, is there anything on this time frame that is covered, that, that, that isn't obviously covered by the others? I saw you tweeting some daily time frame levels, I believe. What, what are yeah, you looking on this one? Uh, so I have the 14th of May um, candle boxed out. Uh, that's before we made um, the the lower high. Gotcha. I don't, and um, I, I think that's quite important. It's quite nice. Like the reason, and I talked about this on, on the Wednesday stream. The reason why I like it is because it's below the, the weekly support, <clears throat> right? Yes. Um, so like I had the weekly support um, low at 62.963. And then that support goes all the way down to like 61.6. And something that oftentimes happens is that you get like a move into a lower time frame level. And that is lower than the high time frame level, right? Which gives you like an, an even better entry. Like you basically get an early entry into the higher time frame trade. That's why I like it so much. Um, and there was a trade there already, right? Yesterday, um, like we hit we hit the level. Um, I actually tweeted about it. I was like, "This is confidence support is quite nice." Uh, and then it bounced, but it got rejected by um, by resistance. Like I have a resistance at sixty five point three k, and um, yeah, now it kind of looks like shit again. <laughs> but I think as long as that holds, we're good. If that breaks, it's going to be an early indication that the weekly level is also going to break. Um, uh, but as long as it holds and the weekly doesn't close below, uh, I think you have a really, like as a bull, you have a really nice setup here uh, in that in that support level because you, you can basically say, hey, we have weekly support, we have daily support, we have a range reclaim, um, the, the, but sadly, you also have you also have the macro situation where people are talking about uh, a recession, and then you also have the lower highs, right? So that it's not all all well and good, but from a TA perspective, I think it doesn't really like get much better than like confident support uh, and a range tree claim. So um, if I if I was really bullish. And if I was ignoring everything else, uh, this would kind of be the area where I would want to do business at. Um, it's just that I'm not that bullish because of macro and because of just generally the 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 altcoin space also, like just everything that's been going on has just been kind of like making me less excited to be bullish. But if, if I ignore everything else, like just Bitcoin TA and the way I usually trade, like this is where I would want to, to kind of see if I can get a position. There you go. You know, so if, if the market goes down, we'll just clip the part where you're bearish. And if it goes up, we'll clip the part <laughs> where you're bullish and post that as we always do. 
Ah, uh, yeah, we have we're way, way too lazy to clip stuff because there's some there's been some good some good commentary, um, if nothing else, on the show that, that has just been lost um, because we just were too lazy to look back and oh, actually the play Luna stuff. For it. <laughs> oh yeah, great Luna, and then just generally like calling the market sometimes. I mean, not always, but sometimes quite nicely. And then like I look back through these things from time to time like oh shit like no, this is quite good but then clipping the thing and actually uploading and no, taking too lazy uh, it's like fuck it it's too much work sorry yeah i don't think these videos even have ads enabled on them or whatever so. no no they don't they yeah don't. and i feel like the clout route is just the thing is we get accused of that kind of stuff anyway like when i say satirically like oh we'll just clip the part we're bullish etc we'll, we'll always get at least one comment being like oh this is so dishonest why would you you know do it and stuff like that it's like this is clearly your first video that you're watching <laughs> yeah. um okay yeah that makes sense daily time frame your, your argument is basically that uh it's an extremity right oh yeah it's the last one the last one do or die to use the famous ta phrase <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's not technically the last support. We have more supports lower. It's just the last one that I actually like. Okay. Like, that I mean, you could, actually makes sense. Yeah, you, I mean, you can talk about sixty k, but I mean, fuck sixty k, really. And then any you have like the fifty eight k low, um, as well. But mm. if you go that low, I think that's just it's just gonna go lower because at that point right and the reason why i'm saying this be like this is so much better than than 60k or 58k is the moment you get so close to the prior low the the trend is kind of like it becomes more and more likely that the trend is actually a driving factor not the range reclaim right right because the range reclaim argument only really holds if we can like if we get rejected by range high and then go all the way back down to range low and fail supports, then at that point, the argument just becomes less and less good because the range argument is that a bunch of people got caught on the wrong side of the market, right? But yes. if you go all the way to the range high and then go all the way back to the range low, there's no one really caught on the wrong side of the market besides maybe the people that were betting on a breakout. So you sure. have the opposite, the, the opposite effect. So I think this is the support. Um, if you're bullish, this is what you want to look at. You want to look for bullishness in between 61.8 and 63K. And then you want to see that bullishness um, transform into uh, the weekly support holding. Uh, best case scenario, close above 64K this week. Um, and then, I mean, if, if next week wicks lower, right? And that's always possible. Like if we if we have a really shitty next week, but we closed above support, um, so be it. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I would hope for on the bullish side of things. On the bearish side of things, um, you just want this daily support to fail and then um, you take any any setup that you can find, really. Oddly reasonable for you, Don. I'll say that. Oh, I, I, I think most of the time I'm actually quite reasonable, <laughs> but people are like, <laughs> people are people were upset at me that I was tweeting on a on a on a red day, right? Oh, like that's no. that's a new trend. And I was actually tweeting something bullish, so I I don't really understand how that works, right? Because I was like, this is like everything's at support, um, and then people were like, oh, here's Don again tweeting on red days. And I'm like, but you're yes. complaining that I'm bearish, but I'm not. Like I, like I don't understand. I think at this point, since the meme coin saga, people have essentially capoed you in their minds, which is to say, yeah. have created a caricature of you and your views and what you actually think and your actual views don't matter, and it's just what the caricature dictates that you must think, and so that gives full artistic liberty to just make up whatever positions, uh, whether you hold them or not, and assign them to you as slash when convenient. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I, I get that. It's just I'm confused because that call was quite good i think like the whole meme coin thing like i i think if you if you talk with any meme coin trader right like or like at least 90 percent of them ever since i said that they've lost money i think there's almost no way that you made money um trading memes um when like since since i since i said like hey memes are fucked right like if you look at with for example like i i was bearish that at 3.15 and now it's trading at 1.8 and it's been the worst price action on the planet. Like this is fucking bad. And I'm like, I don't understand how, like, I, I still get comments how bad of a call that was. And I, I, I just don't understand. I think they're looking at a different market or something. 
<laughs> like, like, I legit don't yeah, understand. It's it's not great. Um, but yeah. Well, memes haven't really gone anywhere because I mean, ETH kind of trades like a meme with its response Oof. to news, and then more recently. Oof. In, in my watch list, I mean, if this isn't the state of crypto, I don't know what it is. Do you know what I've got for my special casual Friday watch list? I've got the wow. S&P, PopCat, Solana, and Mew, M-E-W. It's like two cat coins, Solana, and the S&P 500. I think it's a pretty wow. uh, insightful summary on the state of crypto. Um, yeah. Let's start with ETH BTC, actually. So wow. show me on this chart where ETH got an ETF. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you'd think that was the big green week, but it was not. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. We talked about this. Yes. I was like, the, the, like uh, we talked about this, and we were like, the, the TA is shit, right? Like, yeah, you want to trade the bullish ETF, whatever, but the TA on ETH BTC is like, like that's bearish. That's a clearly bearish chart. We even we even pulled out the the fucking trend line. Oh god, I'm not going to draw that again. No, you don't have to. But it was perfect. Bearish 057 because. also worked. Yeah, zero zero point zero five seven, yeah. perfect retest. So you have both of those, and it's it's just bearish. And if you if you open the monthly chart for me, yeah, um, they, I have a range low at zero point zero five five on the monthly. Um, basically, the wick, like the first wick to the downside after we set um, the highest, like we had that, that two months, yes. two months up, and then yeah, zero point zero five something anyway um that also quite nicely retested and um is now moving lower and if you just look at it from like ignoring everything else that just seems like it wants to go like on the monthly chart it seems like it wants to go to 0 0.035 which would mean that we're only halfway through the eve bear market yeah, but it seemed like it was wanting to, it, you know, it seems like it's been wanting to go to that level for like three months now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's... <laughs> like it started bearishly retesting in like November of 2023. <laughs> yeah, actually quite crazy how like it's been the May of 2021 is where, where, where like where it put that the, uh, the, the, the highest close can not not highest close, but like pretty much the top in. Sure. And and that's been three years now. May 2021. Yeah, that like the, the the green candle basically the expansion. Oh, you're talking candle. about the, yeah the top top yeah. Yeah, yeah. The highest yeah yeah okay. No, not the highest close and also not the highest traded, but that's kind of the range boundaries I have. Yes, anyway. that's the range boundary. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> like this ranged for for two years plus, almost three, and then it broke down, and then it bearishly retested for another year, <laughs> like literally been at that range boundary for a year and now it's starting to move so down. it's going to go down for a year is that your sacred geometry no i actually don't know but it just doesn't look good no, like it shit. legit just doesn't look good i mean um, this trade has cost people so much money it's actually fucking unbelievable yeah you know? and I, I think it's even worse than it looks like because i think most people just like they don't dare talk about eve anymore um because like you get ridiculed on on twitter now but the the crazy thing is that I think people have gotten like they're still obviously believers in ETH and they're still trading it. I think they just don't dare to talk about it. So yeah. I think like there's even more losses on the ETH side of things than you would actually believe from how sentiment is oh, and everything. Yeah, um, because every time you have actually like an, an ETH BTC move that is to the upside, you you see everyone talk about it. Yes, and um, that is not necessarily something that you get after four years of bear market on an asset, right? Like you get you get a 2% move and people are all over ETH. And um, but then we get punished for it like 24 hours later, like clock. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite it's quite bad. I mean, I generally, I, I also want to be bullish ETH. Like that would actually be my, like my favorite bullish trade um, if I get a bullish setup on ETH. Um, but just looking at ETH BTC, there's nothing You were there. pretty open-minded around the ETF, no? At least ETH outperformance relative to other stuff. Have, have your views oh, changed on that? I mean, it has been outperforming. Um, it's just been, everything's gone down, right? Like, yeah. I mean, if you compare ETH to almost anything, like even if you compare it to Solana, right? And people like always kind of should talk this, but Solana has been the strongest old coin, right? Or one of the strongest ones. And uh, so you kind of have to, I think you kind of have to compare it to Solana. But even if, like, if you compare it to anything else, ETH has been outperforming massively. Um, like, if you compare it to Doge, if you compare it to anything else, ETH has just been better. It's just been, like, 
shit, right? And everything else has been more shit. Um, but even if you compare it to Solana, like it's been kind of going sideways. Um, it's just all coins just generally. I mean, range really bound terrible. at least on Sol ETH, yeah. Yeah, yeah Sol ETH just the like, clean range actually. Yeah. Um, and every time, every time it goes up, people ridicule the the people that are like, oh yeah, ETH is good. And everything, every time it goes down, the opposite. <laughs> and it's just been, it's just kind of been ranging. And I think Sol ETH. Um, like I think Solana is gonna be much weaker than ETH um, in a bear market. I think that's like pretty straightforward um, and pretty self-explanatory. Yes. Um, but why do you yeah, think I that think is? It, is it because the core of the speculation and the hyper gamblers are gone? Or yeah, yeah. I think just generally like the the whole narrative for and the whole reason why I think like why solana has been outperforming so big is because people have been using it right like people have been using it to trade like the the meme coins they've been mostly that honestly like they've been trading it um like buying solana to buy meme coins and like or interacting with the solana ecosystem which is basically just taking parts taking part in rugs right now um and the moment that stops right like let's say we head into a bear market uh you have a bunch of like freshly, and this is what I talked about earlier, like you have a bunch of fresh coins, right? Like you don't have the coins in, in holder hands. You have a lot of coins that are still flowing, um, which I just think is going to lead to more sell pressure because people are going to sell more sold the, the lower price goes, just how it is. Um, and then also just generally um, how the market has been behaving, right? Like Bitcoin's been having the least drawdowns, ETH been the second least, and then you just go down the list. And basically the bigger the market cap, the, the less the drawdowns. And I think Solana is going to be no exception. So I think if we are headed into like a bear or just generally bearish price action, uh, you can expect Solana ETH to go down. Um, if we're going to bottom, there's a good chance that Solana ETH just goes back up again. Um, so you basically that trade and that's a little bit cursed for the eve people right because that trade is basically you betting like if you're betting on on eve you're betting on a bearish market essentially right because otherwise you could just be betting on something else and that's been the curse of crypto just generally because i think bitcoin would have traded much higher if people didn't see the old coins as like an easier bet to the, to the upside right people are just like okay i'm going to trade i'm going to trade this old coin um, because I'm going to make more money. I, like I'm bullish Bitcoin, so I'm going to trade this altcoin. And I think uh, you have the same situation just in reverse um, on a lot of these things too. So it's kind of, like, it, it's a weird situation. And if you're holding ETH, you're basically, you basically, you might be better off, like if the market is bullish to to hold something else. But if the market is bearish, uh, you're, you're happy to hold ETH, but then you would be more happy to just not hold any crypto. Um, which is fucking cursed. Like I, I hate that situation to be in because then you can say like, Hey, I'm not losing as much as the other people, but I'm still losing money. And that's kind of what's been happening in the last few days. Yeah. I think I, I don't see any strong arguments against that. Also just, I mean, this happens every cycle, but especially recently, even the biggest advocates for like the meme coin trenches, they've become cynical and jaded. Just looking at what pump fun has been pushing out, etc., And it's just been, more extractive than ever before most of these don't even make it to radium like it's it's been so ugly every single celebrity it feels like we've run through dozens and dozens so much raised in pre-sales all the celebrity coins down so much like it's it's been pretty rough on yeah. that side and it took so little time as well right like taking from one extreme to the other uh you know on one side is vc coins are opaque and insidery so we're gonna do like fun fair launches to being more opaque and more insidery than those same VC coins. That was a fucking speed run from one yeah. to the other, you know? As soon as people realized they could just get richer by playing dirty, essentially, or playing insidery games, it, it didn't really take much convincing at all. Um, and also, like, sophistication levels increased as well. People just start, you know, tracking, like, like sniping launches on one side and then people being able to track those and coming up with more or less mental levels of resistance for when they should get out of these coins and rotate at certain market caps. It became so cynical, so sort of cere cerebral and professionalized so quickly. And I think the original dream literally died within months type of thing. Yeah. Um, 
but again, it's actually quite wild like how quickly i i think that's just generally something that crypto gravitates towards right like you get something cool and then you get a bunch of people to hop on for the money and they just kind of twist it in a like a, in a bad way and then it just becomes everything that crypto actually stands against and then people get jaded and they move on to the next thing like like a bunch of people make something cool again and then the same thing happens like the cool thing gains traction and then like a bunch of people come in for the money and they twist it and then you start over and over and over again like that's been the crypto story i think in a nutshell well the correct response there is you two are washed up boomers you don't you don't know how on chain works didn't make any money you missed everything you're just salty seethe german poor european that's fair right. points fair points valid <laughs> yeah. also i didn't i've talked about this before but like i just don't think there's a good faith way for whatever that's worth apparently that's worth zero but i just don't think there's a good faith way that i can engage with solana meme coins because if i look at my dms on any day there's now been a persistent cycle where i will just scroll through my message requests and see a bunch of coins mentioned or even just dms from the coin itself I'll ignore it, and then three to seven days later, suddenly that coin is the top of my feed, tweeted by large accounts over and over and over again. You know? Yeah, actually insane. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, come on, you know? And Like, how desperate do you have to be to shift this shit for money? Like, well, that's, that's I what I mean. That. And, like, there's just, I just think with that level of asymmetry, there's just no way to engage that sector in good faith. And it's so cynical and it's probably illegal in one, one form or another, or in oh, some I way, mean, it's, yeah, right? It's probably, like this, it's this can't be right. Illegal, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that made me so much have more. To. Go on. Yeah. You don't even have to know anything about law. Just <laughs> inherently understand that that's not fine. But I just basically had to, I, I think if you're in that kind of position where you get these coins DMing you themselves or influencer agencies or whatever else, some combination, and offering you coins on these hugely asymmetrical terms, uh, if you're in that position, I feel like at least you basically have to make a decision. You either say, fuck it, like I'm going to accept all of this, nothing matters anyway, fuck Zach XBT, I'm just going to like be a USD maxi, deal flow maxi, milk it, and no one's going to give a shit anyway, you know, time to roll the dice, let's fucking go, and you play that game, or you basically have to say there's no reasonably legal, equal, good faith way to engage with this, where there isn't a huge asymmetry between my entries, my positions, my prices versus what I'm going to be shoving down my followers' throats. Therefore, I have to opt out. Like, that may seem like a, you know, false dichotomy, but in my mind, that that's pretty. those are pretty much the two clear options. Because as soon as you do it once, the probability that you sort of end up resisting uh, doing it again, I think is pretty low. And also the way it works is when these projects see that you've done it for one project and all these people talk to each other, right? They see yeah. you do it once, like you'll get 10 times more inquiries than uh, than previously. So I just think you have to make a choice at that point. You either play the game or you don't. And maybe because I'm an idiot, uh, I chose not to play the game, but I think there's at least some rational justification for it. But it will never stop being funny seeing those same coins in my fucking DMs and then seeing them on Twitter like a week later from from the usual suspects, so to say. Yeah, it's actually. I mean, it is quite quite crazy. And then and then you see the comments on those tweets <laughs> where people and, and you're like, where they're like, oh, thank you and whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. You, you guys don't even understand, like. And so much like of this, this like LFG type shit from other yeah. people in the same deal. And it's like, come on, guys. Another thing that I've never understood is like I'll randomly get clowned on like, oh, you're poor, you're a shit trader, you haven't made any money, etc. It's like, well, if you go through my feed, how much of it is me shilling random low cab dog shit or altcoins or things I've invested in or pre-seed, pre-sale, whatever, right? Like you just won't see any of it. And so what's the rational explanation there? Like if I were really desperate and really uncomfortable and was playing catch up to do X, Y, Z, uh, and I have every opportunity to just make free money essentially by fucking sending out a tweet wouldn't you expect me to do that basically if things were as desperate as they seemed if anything the opposite is true right like yeah. prices are high the market's been good if you've remotely kept your shirt on there's no compelling reason for you to be taking these chills even if they're for like you know tens of thousands of dollars often often a lot higher than that you know it's like the opposite of true is the opposite of what you think is true in those cases like there's a reason we haven't been taking part in this 
chilly pre-sale meme coin meta you know yeah and if your inference from is... that is that you're washed up and you don't know what you're doing well then i've got bad news <laughs> about <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know your Logical inferential thinking, yeah. skills yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, the reason why we haven't been doing it is because we're morons. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's pro that's by far the truth. Uh, but no, I mean, I like I 100% I agree. It, it's always funny and you, you always see the same people and they're always kind of claiming that they're the best traders in the world. Always. Um, where I'm like, I mean, I can be the best trader in the world if I show like a low cap to someone. <laughs> like, like the, it's so easy to be, be the best trader in the world if you have like a bunch of people buying your bags and the market cap of your coin is lower than 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 like six figures like yes. at that point like what what kind of game are you playing the, the game that you're like the trading that you're doing is like it's speculating on how at much, that point yeah it's like speculating on how much money your followers have to pump this shit right like I, what's the point like that's not trading to me but um yeah i i the, the thing is like i don't even think it's gonna come back to haunt anyone um beyond like karma like i think uh, like it's so commonplace now that i don't think anyone's actually gonna gonna be like there's gonna be one or two cases where some of these people are gonna go in front of a court but i think most just gonna get away with it um so from that standpoint i think a lot of people are just like i mean why not right like it's an easy payday and you don't have to actually try to trade you can actually just make money that way um but yeah i think I mean, that reinforces your original point, the way fucking idiots now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's much risk to it. Uh, it's just like, imagine looking yourself in the mirror and being like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm that guy. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to. I still like, think the legal, that there's like a long tail legal risk there. Yeah, you think uh, like in five or ten years? Like, like... Potentially, like long tail legal risk that you at least have to consider, right? Uh, but I, I mean, most of these people just fuck off to Dubai anyway and just hide um so that's one thing but also what i used to think at the very least was that there's like reputational risk but that that oh, that, that is that's so no. wrong um uh, that, that like almost the opposite of that is true now if anything i don't know if you agree with that oh yeah people celebrate these, these yeah things. yeah yeah it's almost like you're more engaged and you're more into crypto if you do that type of stuff and if you don't you're kind of like weird i guess uh, it's like the idea that oh i don't like chill these weird KOL rounds or seeds on my followers because I think it's like a bad deal for everyone except me and that's net negative and extractive uh no no one thinks of those in, in those terms anymore uh and, and every single cycle people care less and less like you'll recall in 2017 as we keep talking about like your own peers would immediately call you out if you tweeted some like market cap that was listed on a centralized exchange but it was below a certain market cap or trading volume relative to uh, your follow account, right? And follow yeah. accounts at that point, a vast majority of what was like sub 100k for like pretty much. Everything, yeah, like you right? were like big account with 20k followers. Big account with 20k followers, and that used to, you know, and the community would like was, was small. Everyone knew each other, and we'd self police and like ostracize people who were clearly using their audience to have market impact and pump and dump shit coins. Whereas now it's like basically it's open season right like everyone's doing it in one form or another be it meme coins or pre-sales or sniping launches whatever and so it's it, it's created a stone you know throwing stones from glass houses situation like you don't want to call anyone out because you want to keep the door open for you to get rich quickly and easily doing the same thing so like nothing matters anymore and because nothing matters everything is permissible type of thing yeah i think the reason like one of the reasons is that the market just generally not been giving much besides those things, right? Like the, the whole meme coins and like shit, like garbage, dumb stuff that people have like really good deals on. Those are actually have been the ones that have been moving, right? And it's because all the followers basically losing their money on them. Um, but then people delude themselves into thinking like, hey, this guy is like calling out good coins because they're moving the coin, right? Like, and if you're early enough, I mean, they're doing, they're doing you a favor, quote unquote, right? Like, that's how it feels like, like, Hey, I saw this tweet first and then I got a two X or three X out of it. Um, and I think that's kind of where a lot of it comes from. And the, the people that lose kind of just blame themselves. They're like, Hey, I, I saw this guy shill it. Uh, I didn't buy. It. And then I FOMO bought it after it was two X or three X or 10 X higher. And then it rug pulled. Um, 
that's just on me, right? Like, I think that's kind of where some of this comes from. That's so which, bad, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I legit think, like, that's that's kind of where, where like, like the thinking that a lot of people I mean, you end up making it. excuses for the people that are inadvertently Taking not money fucking from you. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's legit. How what a great is. position to be in as the influencer, right? You can, you can yeah. essentially do no wrong. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, God, we could... I'm sure people are tired of this topic, but it might be an yeah, interesting yeah. sort of benchmark in crypto history if it ever changes or not you know it's like someone says what was the meme coin meta like in 2024 and they can find a relic of a casual friday episode and listen to two people who aren't really participating and then call us idiots but then actually get a somewhat neutral uh view on those things yeah ah right enough pontificating don let's talk about eth usd Oh, also, um, just very quickly, sorry. Uh, how, how hilarious was the thing uh, where we just, you know, the top, oh, here, the memes bounce the hardest. Oh, yeah, <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like, we talked about it. We, like, this was this was a Casual Friday episode. Oh, like, the, man. Like, that's the one that we should, like, that's the stuff we should clip, right? Where we're like, like, everyone, like, just open with for a second. Like, Done. because that's that's a really good that's a really good example. People were tweeting this unironically, right? Because it bounced like first of all, it went basically to zero, right? From four point eight all the way down to one point four. Which I mean, if you bought the top seventy percent down, that's, right? Like the meme people are always like, yeah, eighty percent down. That's just part of doing business, but it's still <laughs> that's like a Wednesday. Top, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's still like if you bought the top, your money is basically gone, right? Um, but anyway it it died really really hard bitcoin was still trading at the highest and then it bounced and people were all over the place being like yeah memes are memes are look at memes um like people are shit talking memes and now look at that it's bouncing the hardest it's it's doing the best it's clearly the sector to be in and then it just fucking died the hardest too right like i mean this is just literally just these things go up more than anything else and they go down more than anything else and those kind of arguments as we discussed in that show is just so dumb um as you can see now right like this should like bitcoin is still in the same range that it has been um for uh, a long time now and with is trading significantly lower and with is one of the better memes i was right? just like, about to say that yeah <laughs> like the, the 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 ones that are not on centralized exchanges the the stuff that people don't talk about anymore I mean that's much worse, right? I don't. I haven't looked at Bowden, for example, in a long time, right? right? But I'm sure if you open that one up, uh, you're gonna didn't see. Want to. Oh shit! <laughs> oh yeah, that's quite. <laughs> I just opened it. It's down ninety nine point thirteen percent. Nice. Um, so and that was one of the ones that was shilled heavily, right? Um, and I mean at least me... on this Kraken chart, from the low it bounced like three hundred percent. You know. Oh, did it? Yeah. Um, from the 23rd of july low on the four hour oh and, yeah yeah but then it nuked again yeah yeah but that but hey it was outperforming on that day you know oh yeah yeah but that, well, that, that counts eight hour like period the, i mean at least you had you, you, you had some money for for a brief period of time it sounds like um, we're just being self-congratulatory self-congratulatory cynical assholes and at least part of that is true but the more important point i guess we're trying to put some focus on is that if you're you need to compare oranges and oranges so if you're making arguments for like relative strength, outperformance, etc., you need to at least somewhat account for market cap and liquidity and depth instead of just looking at like and previous price action instead of just looking at raw percentage returns. Because as you mentioned, like even the impact on your portfolio from something that goes down 80% and then bounces 40 versus something that goes down like 10% and bounces five, that's going to be a world of difference. And then just the, you know, the sort of mean reversion mechanics uh, on something that's a lower market cap, lower liquidity coin versus higher market cap, higher liquidity coin. I mean, there's so many differences between those two categories that if you then compare them as like and like to make an argument for relative strength, relative weakness, I mean, the entire premise is invalid because you're committing a category, category error of putting those two things together. But that was like yeah. the war cry for a decent amount of time for coins that have essentially gone to zero now, sort of slash don't exist, or just in generally haven't recovered anywhere close to their all-time high prices and have had a much worse impact on people's portfolios because you were essentially conflating illiquid bounces after huge nukes to relative strength. And those are like complete opposite ends of reality, essentially. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like comparing, like you're like... Um... 
like leveraged Bitcoin is so much, so much better, like so much more bullish than non-leveraged <laughs> Bitcoin. It's like, it's not how it works. Like, like these memes are literally like, just like, as if you slid the leverage slider to 10 X and then you just trade that, right? Like, obviously like the bounces are going to be harder, but that, that makes no sense to, to argue that therefore, like that, like they're the, the place to be. It's just, you're trading, you're trading something on leverage basically. Um, and I think just generally with the memes, uh, I, now, like with the, how the market's been trading, there's been a lot of money just flowing out of that space, right? And I think it's catching up to the memes, basically. Like you, the, the pump.fun, like how much money they've made and how much money these, like these, uh, these coins, like these projects have made, right, um, is catching up because retail has been completely fucked, I think. Um, and if you look through the data, it, it confirms that. Um, basically the amount that these people have been paid is so astronomical and um, the projects are basically almost all at zero now. So you know that there's been value extracted, which basically just means that a bunch of people just got giga wrecked. Um, and this is something that makes sense for a sector that is basically valueless, right? Like its only value is speculative. And um, the moment people stop trading these things, you just stuck holding the bag. So yeah, I don't know. Like, it, I think the whole meme thing is gonna come back up again the moment the market turns around. Um, but I think it's gonna be uh, you're gonna struggle to find the same kind of favor for like these dumb garbage, whatever the fuck coins, like these, like the tenth dog coin, uh, just because of how rough it was for the people that have been trading it like, i mean you're clearly behind on we're on cat coins now so yeah you should oh but the, the cat coins not doing so well i don't know i mean they do have nine lives so if they die once done oh you know, fair enough they're a lot more Actually, lindy than dog coins study that study that yeah um eth usd weekly time frame um i kind of mentally checked out when covering this on monday markets because i was like look even if you just go like range low 2300 range high 3800 like fuck this thing basically and yeah. even the weekly cluster i was like this thing kind of looks washed and not so great and whatever else and i think at the, this is one of those rare instances where i sort of tunnel visioned on the lower time frames and said that there was a really nice yeah i think it was even on the four hour like a really nice retest level at 3300 ish and i was like look if you want to be bullish this like maybe range low whatever but like intraday 3300 plus probably makes sense anything else like meh whatever and i mean considering this thing got like an etf and one of the more dominant narratives was this is gonna mirror btc price action essentially yeah um my view at least was a bit more guarded it was like well if it is going to follow then you can at least wait for the action like I, you know i think consistently on this show the argument was that the crypto natives have already done the pivoting and the market has basically played out every possible permutation of price action, bullish and bearish, without having the actual ETF. And so the next trade will be contingent on what the ETF flows are actually like. Uh, and so if you essentially weighted that out, I think that ended up playing out quite nicely because ETH found another way to disappoint, essentially. And so that entire rally up from the range lows at 3k, essentially, that walk up, basically been fully retraced now. Um, yeah. And... Yeah, I, just, I, I don't know. I just, I just, and then this just sort of goes back to the earlier point about ETH consistently finding a way to sort of disappoint or underperform this cycle. You know, weak relative to BTC. If you wrote, if, if you did the very early rotation of ETH, BTC ETF equals ETH ETF, therefore bullish ETH, that was wrong. Layer two rotation is ETH beta based on that bet, also wrong. Okay, now the BTC has the ETH ETF that's going to rotate to ETH flow type of argument also wrong ETH ETF isn't priced in or wasn't sufficiently priced in when the Bloomberg analysts changed their whatever probabilities from like zero to a hundred wrong okay everyone's capitulated the pre ETF news now that was the shakeout <laughs> the actual ETF is going to be bullish wrong <laughs> like fucking hell dude um yeah. it's it's really fucking tough and this thing has had so many layups essentially to do what people have been begging it to do essentially um, but it just hasn't, for lack of a better term. So 
what do you i mean eth btc we sort of talked about this is, it's very hard to give a shit about that chart or get excited it just looks at best it's like well it's, it hasn't done anything it's still the same as it was uh, at worst it's just like it just looks like high time frame expansion is cooking and we've just been delaying the inevitable but in any case you're not going to be getting any bullish signals from eth btc at the moment uh, and if you do they tend to be short-lived and by short-lived i mean literally one weekly candle for the most part is yeah all this thing can muster what do you think about eth usd um i mean it's very likely gonna basically just close very shittily like i had that cluster um i think you have the same one that like on the 22nd of april like that green candle um, yes and i like on on the last show i was like yeah we are technically at support but i just stay away from it basically because it's fucking eve um and the way things are looking now, there's a good chance we're going to close below it. And then we're going to retest the same support we've retested a million times. Um, and uh, I don't know, it just looks like it wants to break down to me. Um, so I, I don't like it. I and, and there's very little this chart can do to make me like it because it's so choppy and so ugly um, that like even if this is bullish, it's really, really hard to just trade it. Like, where do you put a risk defined setup here? Like I couldn't, it needs to break down for me to find a risk defined setup. Um, if it comes back up above 3.2, 3.3K, then you can be like, oh yeah, the support held, but then like, where do you put your stop loss? What, like all that kind of stuff is just really, really hard. Um, so I just don't like it. I think with how EFPTC, look, EFPTC looks right now, like EFPTC looks like it's gonna go lower, like significantly so. Um, and I know this is me saying that in like the most bullish news that we've had. Um, so I could be wrong on that, right? Like I, I don't have anything riding on, on that opinion, but just looking at EFPTC, just, it looks like it wants to go lower. I look at EFUSD and it's retesting the same support. It's tested like a million times. Um, <laughs> Don, I fucking I love know. these eight plus touch support setups because my psychological process is the same every single fucking time like i look at a level that's really beaten up and i'm like okay well i didn't trade this shit you know more than three four tests unless it's a failed breakdown or something of that nature or it's a very low yeah. time frame especially if i'm not like properly zoomed in actively trading i'm like i'm not going to touch it and so naturally what happens is it fucking bounces really hard and i think oh fucking dog shit ta i hate my rules this is retarded just buy <laughs> yeah. the support next time stop overthinking you know and it rallied like eth from that range low do you remember that casual friday where i was like oh mate it's it's at the range low you should buy it you know the whole pub thing. yeah yeah like it went up 20 yeah. percent from that support right so, yeah. so i was like oh fucking hell was like I, I even parodied how simple that trade setup is and it played out so i feel like a complete cunt having missed that and then when it does this which is fully retraced i'm like oh i'm a fucking genius i knew i should have <laughs> bought this support because i'll look at it now you know and it's yep. just, it just keeps going that way uh if the market moves against you it's like my system is a scam and if it puts you back on side or the, the setup ends up not working out exactly as it would have you're like oh i never really missed the trade it was just you know i'm actually a genius it's yeah. like the 60k fud you know it's like you fud it it, is, it bounces yeah. you're like ah you know whatever who knows that it goes back to 60k <laughs> you're like i fucking told you <laughs> yeah and then it bounces again and again yeah. and again um but yeah I, I i think it just makes sense are you rebuying 2900 on eighth no. test best test for real this no. time for real for no, real no, no, no cap no. i mean you look at the daily chart and you look at 2029 and you're like do i really want to like lower highs like and this is like this is clearly so much more bearish than than Bitcoin is, right? Like from like just looking at the daily time frame, um, like there's so clean lower highs, um, pushing into the same resistance as same support over and over and over again. Um, if you if you were so inclined, you could even draw like a, a descending triangle or whatever you want in there. Um, I I'm not a believer in patterns, but I generally just look at this price action. I'm like yeah this is support this could hold but then i probably want it higher uh, i wouldn't want to risk my neck especially given like finding invalidations for a trade like that is pretty much impossible right like if you buy now um and your invalidation is 2.9 uh you're gonna get slipped if if we go to 2.9 and if it wipes the, the the stop losses below 2.9 and then goes up you're gonna be sad right so like no matter where like i i don't think there's a high probability setup even if you think this is gonna go up like i wouldn't know where like 
where to where to put my stop where to like how to manage trade just because of how it's been been playing out i mean and Donald, those are pro tip away. for you by the way if you set the leverage slider appropriately the market will put a stop in for you it's just oh yeah it's just it's called it's something it's else it like liquidation price or something but there's a nice built-in risk management feature where it oh, kind of closes the position for you why have i been bothering yeah. <laughs> i mean i usually i i full transparency transparency i usually don't use stop losses um I just have mental ones, basically. Like I'm like, if it crosses this level, uh, I, I'm really looking for an exit. Um, you also don't sleep when you trade. Uh, yeah, most most. Which is at least, it. you know, in part commensurate with that approach. Like you I, can't it, set a fucking mental stop and then like check the charts once a day. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I I do sleep, but it depends. It depends on on like I can tell. Um, whether the market is going to move big or not. Like the direction is harder, right? But you can generally tell whether something is going to be volatile or not. Um, so when I'm in a position um, that does need active management, because I sometimes in, I'm in positions where they don't mm -hmm. actually need any management, right? And I'm like, I, I just live my life. But if they, if I'm if I feel like there's edge in actively managing, um, then I look at the market, I kind of like figure out whether it's going to be volatile or not. And if I know it's going to be volatile, I just don't sleep as much. Um, and if, if I know it's going to be not volatile, uh, I just go to sleep. So it depends. You just trade options in that case, Don. Bet on vol if it's Oh, yeah. Easy. I mean, I, there was like a chat in, in, on Twitter that basically told me that he retired himself by just basically because i keep talking about like whether i i think a move is coming or not <laughs> and he did that in 2017 18 19 20 basically and he traded just options oh, based on, legend legend and well, based on like what i was saying like he wasn't even doing anything himself he was just like uh, okay don this like don thinks this is not gonna move so i'm just gonna trade that way with my options and he was just literally retired himself like and i was just sitting there slaving away <laughs> that's so clever and i was like what the fuck i mean they're both too dumb for options let's be real <laughs> yeah i mean that's literally the reason like yes. I, I don't there's no other good it. reason i i would lose my shirt and also like options were not were not really um approved by the german government now <laughs> they are ish the only thing the german government approves in crypto is just is Selling, selling all the coins <laughs> oh yeah but imagine if they sold the top dude that'd be quite funny no, i'm sure you'd find it hilarious don uh so right. Eve not interested in the 10th test of the range low but maybe like a wipeout or just a breakdown in general would be more interesting because it'd be risk to find something like yeah that. but i I'd probably just like i want to trade Eve, but i look at this chart and like where the fuck am i realistically okay. gonna find something and the and answer Eve to BTC that is, doesn't help just, right yeah i mean if basically i'm gonna trade Eve if i have a good bullish bitcoin setup um along with a good eve btc setup okay you might have to wait fuck eve usd yeah and uh, fuck eve btc too like that's ugly as fuck. <laughs> yeah fuck eve btc if there's one thing the show has gotten somewhat right this year as much as we love getting clowned on it's it's eve btc i think yeah that's like a fair yeah. one um the s p 500 pretty not pretty nasty looking weekly oh yeah and Heading i mean it's not... the weekend and just in general, as you mentioned, people give a shit about macro again. Um, yep. Unemployment spike, recession fears, etc. Yeah. You, you know, see the all... move in, in the Japanese stock market. Oh, yeah. N yeah, yeah, yeah. The, those indices the Nikkei, are... Yeah. Mm. Imagine taking your lunch break there. Huh? So some yes. spicy stuff going on. I, I don't really think the you need to become a macro expert to like have a view on this type of stuff per se. It's more the correlation with crypto has generally been a lot of downside capture, no upside capture. So if this thing keeps rolling, we're probably going to find it very difficult to decouple meaningfully from that. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I don't, no, I don't really care, no. right? Like, it's not like there's some huge divergence between crypto and equities, and you essentially have to figure out which one is bluffing. Like, that's tricky and interesting. But in this case, the relationship's actually fairly consistent over the last few months of little upside most of the downside and so if, we get more, <laughs> yeah. if we get more downside then i'm gonna assume especially if the technicals follow through and we're pretty much on our last support anyway that that's just gonna kind of suck uh maybe i'll do some reading this weekend as far as what all the macro newsletter guys are saying if not least the counter trade but yeah i mean at the very least put this in the bucket of shit that's not helping i think yeah i i generally think um 
that I mean the the macro guys have been so horrendously wrong for so long, right? Um, like saying like, hey, we're gonna get a recession, blah blah blah. I think there's a good chance that a lot of people just kind of like they listened to this shit for so long and they believed in it for so long that now that we might actually get it, right? That they're that they're gonna be caught off guard, which would be a, a strike, like an ironic strike of fate, right? Where you're like you have you have this view that the market has to nuke because of this and that, and then the market just doubles and triples from where you have that view, and then you're just like fuck it. And then the market actually does what you think it should have done, like twenty, like fifty percent ago, a hundred percent ago. Um, I think that there's a chance um, that that actually plays out, but um, the macro side of things, just like we're not experts on that front. So, like, but my gut feeling is like on the macro front that there's probably more pain than you you expect. Um, possible and it, with how crypto has been trading like you said little upside very very much downside whenever this moves to the downside uh, we might not be so happy in the next coming months but i also could see it just like continue going up because it's always been going up so <laughs> like but my gut feeling is more that that we're gonna get a bunch of pain basically Great. coming from the from the macro side of things but my that's macro helpful. my macro view was that we're gonna range for a long time. <laughs> it's that's just, true. That's true. Literally just went up only. So um, yeah, I this is the macro show involved. for a reason. Yeah, it's mostly the BTC ETH and complaining show, to be honest. So oh, it is. Yeah, but at least <laughs> at least we're consistent uh, at on least that we're front <laughs> and honest. That's quite fucking rare these days. Yeah, it is. Um, Don, tell me whether I should buy this support test on Popcat right now, please. Oh, fuck, fucking hell. Popcat. I mean, Bitcoin's at support, right? But um, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be something, dude. That just off the cuff, like ignoring the the Popcat uh, thing. How dare you? Like, Bitcoin's at support at sixty three k, right? Right. And a lot of these coins are literally, like, if they break one level lower, like, where the fuck do they go? Like, I, there's something that I thought about, like, the last couple of days, right? Like as I was um, hedging my my um, my remaining crypto by by shorting Soul, right? Um, I was like, I mean, that's a lie, right? You weren't strictly hedging your remaining crypto by shorting Soul. It's more the fact that you're addicted to trading and you could start trading perps again. So you couldn't help yourself and fucking press the red button on Solana and some other stuff. And with PNL flexing in my DMs like three uh, times a day on WhatsApp. <laughs> I mean, that's just. Uh... It's just how you do when you when you hedge, you know. Like a hedge is a hedge is a hedge. <laughs> a hedge is a hedge. Like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but hell. anyway, Gardening I was looking channel. at I was looking at it and I was like, like where the fuck does it go? You know, like um, if if Bitcoin breaks down, which is I think a decent argument to be bullish, right? Because when you have these coins that are just literally on the edge of death, right? Um, or like most of the time, like 90, 95% of the time, it makes sense to bet on upside just because stuff doesn't usually die. The problem is if it does die, you're fucked. Um, but most of the time, it's a good bet. So, um, and, and Solana is like one of the exceptions because that actually, like even if that fails, like the, the range low, like at 135 or whatever, and goes like lower, um, still looks good, right? On, on a big picture. Uh, but like if that we talked about like if that fails the range low where the fuck does it go like it's 2k ish right where it's like that's scary like 2k that's retracing almost the entire bull market already um so yeah just off the cuff like we are kind of at the last support and it's kind of scary because the old coins are kind of like already so fucked that i wouldn't know where they go so is uh, that a yes to buying popcat sorry i just ignored uh, all of that i was waiting for yes a you, should. Answer. you should that's why that that's why i was coming uh, next so basically like if you if you think bitcoin is holding i think popcat is actually a decent support right like uh, the, the one i'm sure you have it on the on the daily time frame 0 0.6 what six six five or something that like where we're trading right now yeah the weekly as well similar yeah. shit. um like that's decent you're trading fucking popcat so that's not so decent but at <laughs> least like you have like a really good 
really good level. Um, so you'll financially compensate my exorbitant losses if this goes wrong, is all I'm hearing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, the problem with memes is that I think like people have lost so much money that like and it keeps on bleeding, right? Like the meme sector keeps on bleeding as long as no new participants come right. in. Um, you're kind of fighting against the, the tide of money. Like there's a tide of money going out and you're trying to capture like while the money is flowing out of the sector, which I think is not the best, um, but could obviously work if you hit that one meme that does well where all the other memes don't do so well. Um, but yeah, it's a decent support. I, I personally wouldn't buy it um, because I wouldn't buy memes. Uh, I think you're quite late to that trade at this point. I think the whole meme super cycle thing is really dumb. I think just generally like that was just a silly argument that people made to justify buying ex extremely overpriced memes. Um, but yeah, it's a good support, could could bounce. Like I'm, I'm not a hater buying this level. I'm just like, the meme's just a little bit overdone, I think, at this point. I also noticed that, that there was a goalpost shift when it came to discussing the meme coin super cycle. When it was posited initially, or at least how most people understood it, if you want to be charitable, was that these coins, like the coins that were going up, going up at the time, are special and different yeah. and aren't going to follow the typical altcoin cycle and whatever else. And so the meme coin super cycle was that that basket of coins, the outperformers, etc. there's something really different and special about them, which means they're not going to follow standard altcoin rules. Now, that was false because they fucking nuked. So then yeah. the meme coin super cycle went from these coins are special and they're different. Uh, the goalpost shifted to, well, memes are like this new financial asset class and there's going to be a financialization of yada, 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 fucking made up excuse thing, basically. Yeah. Uh, and basically that... saying the sector is is good, not the coin. Yes, yes. You're, you're, lose, you're losing money, right? Because you cannot make money on the sector. Like, that's the thing. Like, if I could... And I, I mean, sorry to interrupt, like if, no, no. if you could bet on memes, like just generally, like the, the sector itself without having to pick memes themselves, just like how relevant they are. Like, I think both of us would have been max long that thing. It's just like picking these coins, like, you know what I mean? Especially like, now. Yeah. And I mean, now I think the, the whole, like, I think that would still like be giga down, even if you could just bet on the sector, I think. Uh, was just like a bunch of people were just like very very hyped about it and got completely wrecked um but that's not that's not the argument right like you're not making money if you if you're holding like if the meme sector that you so like brings out new memes every week and those are the ones that are hot um if you're holding anything for longer than like a day or two <laughs> yeah. you're gonna lose money so that's really like it's a shitty argument to make for yes like it's a it's an easy cop out because um, everyone kind of agrees that like this is probably here to stay. Um, I actually not entirely sure with with the memes. The thing is, the argument thing. at that point becomes there will be new coins and those new coins will go up, which is like obvious. well well fucking done. You know we've known this since like 2012 or 13. Or <laughs> yeah, um, it's like, just it, it seems like a subtle sleight of hand rebranding the meme coin super cycle, but shifting it from these specific assets are early Lindy and different to like hey the sector is onto something cool. That's such a gargantuan shift in what you're claiming, but it, it kind of just got you know subtly pushed through like you know those big omnibus omni omnibus bills they have in the u.s where it's like oh this is a bill about x and then on page like eighty thousand something there's like a multi-trillion spending provision or something that's not in the bill itself uh it, it feels like that you know it's like a huge shift but you try to make you try to market it as subtly as you can because your original premise got invalidated or whatever yeah i i i i mean it's 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 a typical influencer trickery is what it is but you told me to buy a pop cat that's the most important thing from that discussion oh yeah no yeah, uh what do you think of solana um i mean looks horrendous um against btc uh, like i mean it, it looks good in comparison to all the other coins sure. right um but and there's something that i talked about actually at the highs um, on the last show uh, if you go on Solana USD weekly, um, basically the highest close screen candle, if you box that out, it's on the 25th of March. Um, 
that was perfectly bearishly retested, right? I don't know if you found it. Yep, sorry, got it. Um, that was the perfect bearish retest, right? Um, and then you can do the same thing on Sol BTC. Basically, that's pretty much the exact same thing, and that was bearishly retested as well. Um, now, in comparison to other things, right? This looks still looks quite good. Um, like it doesn't look like the the world is ending. Like if you look at Eve, or if you if you look at Atom, like just don't. But uh, <laughs> so it looks better than a lot of other things, but it still doesn't look that good. Um, especially given that we're kind of approaching 140 ish again, like that old range low that we kept talking about. Uh, it's kind of the same situation that we had with Bitcoin. Is that the one that you fudded on being like they better start buying? Yeah, yeah exactly. And that they one. did. <laughs> they they actually did start buying, yeah, which was good because I mean I I I did close my shorts at 135 back then, um, and then like the Solana people pushed it back up. But like if you come back down there, um, starts getting really ugly. So basically, Solana has to have a good good. Um, a good weekly close now like a good like good price action in the next couple of days um otherwise i i don't like it that much mm. um i just generally think it doesn't look that good but like i said in comparison to other things looks much looks much better um by the way that daily chart is exactly the psychology meme i said about eth where you're like oh this level's so beaten up i'm not gonna buy it it goes up you're like fuck and then it retraces you're yeah like, oh, exactly it's, it's literally <laughs> the same thing here i was saying yeah. at like 125 whatever like this is the daily range low it's been tested too many times it's probably gonna go up obviously it went up uh and now that it's sort of halfway down you know if it makes it all the way all the way back to support if you think i won't fud it again <laughs> i mean to be fair <laughs> i wasn't even fudding it i was just making the boring trader claim that like i don't trade these types of setups like no one yeah. gives a shit about that stuff anymore and the distinction between having a view on the market and putting on a position has basically become non-existent right oh you yeah can say like i'm bullish without ever taking a trade or proposing a time frame or a time horizon or an invalidation or anything of that nature and if the market goes up you get rewarded clout wise or socially the reward is almost as if you like went in there and fucking put on a precise position with like a 0.01 percent stop loss max size whatever right yeah. uh but then paradoxically if you say i don't have a setup here or i don't think this is a good long or i don't think it's a good short like you know i'm staying away from this shit that's then taken as a position so non-positions yeah. become positions but then positions become non you know it's, it's just <laughs> very hard yeah. to explain it's mostly people just like projecting views onto you that they kind of want you to have more so than uh what you actually believe in many cases yeah, well, like yeah, if I'm I, saying I don't have a setup to buy at 125, that doesn't mean I'm shorting 125. Like, oh yeah, but people literally claimed that I shorted 100. Like they were like, "Oh, how are your 125 dollars?" <laughs> like, and I was like, "Dude, <laughs> like, how does that work?" But I mean, yeah. Would you rebuy 125? Uh, no. Dude, how like, funny uh, would it be if we get another stream where BTC is at like 60, ETH is at the range low, Sol at 125? And we get to talk shit about it again because it's been tested too many times and it's and the bottom it's the again. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> this would be the best fucking YouTube channel ever, honestly. Oh yeah. But no, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch it. Okay. I think if you wanna if you wanna have a, like a sole position, it's a little bit similar to Bitcoin right now, where it has to hold the way it is right now. Um and this is not because I have a good setup here, because I just straight up don't. Like I don't have good support on Solana USD, I don't have good support on Solana BTC. Um, but given where Bitcoin is, right, like if Solana doesn't hold here and goes back to 135, I could see it bounce again towards like 150 or something. Um, but I think ultimately there's a good chance that that would break down, um, which would be bad, right? Um, so for me, kind of has to kind of has to put some work in. But uh, like right now, just like I don't know just generally for the old coins and i could be completely like like we talk about i don't have a position right now on anything um even even like the the joke hedges whatever that we talked about earlier i closed um but just generally looking at the old coin space i'm wondering where the bias come from right like because we need new bias and i i if people are talking about a recession on the s p and crypto like bitcoin was in a range and you had a bunch of old coins nuking because of it right just because people were bored of bit like of crypto generally and traded something else and old coins just just generally nuked like just straight up like a, a bunch of this stuff it, it, even the favorites of of prior cycles and stuff they're still down like 
70, 80, 90 percent against against uh, USD, um, prior, like compared to their their highs. Like I, I, I just wonder, like what happens? And that was in in good in a good environment, right? When when the S and P was pushing new highs. I wonder where the new buyers are coming from uh, in like a worse environment. Unless you get like the S and P just completely reverse course here, and the whole macro doomer people are just wrong again. Uh, I, I've just failed to see how like the old coin space is, is, is a space that is actually interesting at all. Um, I mean, those new buyers aren't coming from this show. That's for fucking sure. Have you listened to the last like two hours or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's like it's reasonable, right? When you think about it, like we haven't gotten an influx of, of interest in altcoin buying besides like the meme coins um, while Bitcoin was ranging. That's typically where the altcoins do well, right? Like in, in prior cycles, at least, like you have, you have constructive ranges, and then like Bitcoin's boring, and people go to old coins, and old coins go mad. Um, this cycle, we had like I mean, we had the meme coins go crazy, but um, nothing else. And um, now that now that the the landscape is looking a little bit worse, I, I just I'm just curious. Like I'm not even like I'm not even. Uh, like shorting anything or any of that sort. I'm just wondering, like, who's gonna actually buy these things? Uh, and I'm drawing blanks. I don't. I don't really see anything. Well, why would at this point? Why would anyone buy high cap liquid altcoins? Right. Like, even if we reach some sort of pendulum swing inflection point where the memes just become so centralized and so professionalized and extractive and farmy that there's like a return to, to, to tradition where we, it's just like high cap centralized exchange coins or whatever uh that that's gonna take a while and probably requires like a larger industry-wide washout for that narrative to become tenable because still the thing given no new inflows the thing that's gonna attract people is like the last ditch gambling effort essentially right yeah and memes are still the post child for that type of approach to the market i think it's going to take uh, a lot more change if ever to like swing swing back to where we were essentially ah right the last one last coin i had was mew mew this cat coin so you told me to buy pop cat don do i buy mew oh man i can't believe you you're putting this as if i told you <laughs> i mean look at the <laughs> weekly it's a, it's a big retest coming up uh, uh not on binance let me check on on, on what extent on Bybit, okay. mew yeah, yeah i was just on binance and didn't have as much of history uh yeah i mean it is a breakout that immediately came back right which i don't like uh, it's the same with popcat by the way the same like, yeah, so i should buy it okay cool thank you got it yeah, i look forward stuff. to the next next week's episode when i follow up <laughs> with my but i i legit don't like the meme appeal i think yeah, i I, but I, I could be the boomer here, but I just don't get it. I think there's too much money outflowing out of out of memes. Uh, mm -hmm. Unless you get a market wide like reversal and the market just turns super interesting all of a sudden for whatever reason, I, I'm not interested in right. those. What about a weekend bounce? So can we get a short term outlook? Do you think there's any space for for that essentially? Operation I mean, we need it. Rescue the weekly on the weekend. I we we straight up need it. Um, I'm quite neutral. Uh, I I really like I really like the weekly daily combo, right? Okay. Um, on BTC, right? On BTC, but and this is when we were talking about Bitcoin. I was like, uh, the problem the problem is that like just generally the landscape just looks shitty because you scroll through these old coins and it's just horrendous to sure. look at. Um, so you're kind of in this in the situation where. Like a lot of these old coins, like for example, Eve and like a lot of the other ones just look like they're going to break down and then you have Bitcoin at the last support. So it's kind of like, is that like, is that just a false, like false weakness on the old coin front? Is it real weakness and Bitcoin is going to go up anyway? Like, like all that stuff is a little bit confusing, um, but we do need, we do need that daily and that weekly to do its job. Uh, otherwise it starts turning ugly really fast. Um, so we need it. I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna come. Um, I'm quite like I'm quite relaxed about like where the market is gonna go. Like I'm not entirely sure, uh, so I don't want to make grand calls. Like I, I I was very very certain that the range was gonna break down, um, and I was quite vocal about it, and it broke down. Um, now that we're here, I'm just not certain, so I'm not gonna make bold bold calls. Um, my gut feeling is there's a good chance that the the trad fi 
weakness might spill over into crypto. Um, but I have no, no strong positions or feelings. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, this has been a long ass episode. I don't have a lot on the news side. Uh, the main stuff was that US spot Bitcoin ETFs log 50 million inflows and ETH ETFs return to positive flows. Just going to comment about how underwhelming the ETF on the ETH side has been. Uh, and just in general, I, I feel like the market's more sensitive to other headlines, more so than ETF numbers at this point. Not super interesting. The other one was Tether generates a record 5.2 billion. Yeah, in the that's first crazy. Half of the year. We kind of spoke about this privately, how it's just like one of the most per capita or whatever profitable companies in the world at this point and they're just printing trillions essentially off of um, our backs off of our backs day. they should buy more btc but they're kind of doing that already no they should they should airdrop us some shit they should, they should fucking airdrop some btc yeah uh but again mental right tether always been the bogeyman for crypto haters like the yeah. entire industry and this might seem like a bizarre thing to read about for someone joining the industry in the last like year or so but like tether used to be blamed for like every single thing in crypto like, oh yeah price goes up tether price goes down tether like the entire market cycle manipulated by tether we topped because of tether we bottomed because they started printing tether like the entire thing was like a fraudulent ponzi thing that's going to collapse and then it turns out that almost everything else was a fraudulent ponzi thing that collapsed except tether and now they're like one of the most profitable companies in the world right just quite funny yeah. how that works out um this one i just found a bit bad in bad taste uh nansen ceo launches meme coin they hit six million market cap within a day and the fan the, the bit that i found annoying was this according to the block this tweet where the founder essentially said testing some tech a friend built don't ape this thing god damn it and it's like really like you know better than that right if you're like the yeah. founder of a you know analytics platform or whatever and you do the whole okay like here's the coin here's the ticker but guys don't ape in haha ha, wink wink nudge nudge just like come on you know exactly what the fuck you're doing right yeah there's, there's no way to plead ignorance on that front especially in this meta um and the last one this is hilarious. Crypto proprietary trading firm Breakout raises 4.5 million seed funding. So Don, I'm a founder now, which means A, I'm just way more intelligent and more sophisticated than you. And B, I'm supposed to have like some sort of sexual harassment scandal within the next one to three years. Oh, shit. Yeah, just actually. According to, good. <laughs> just according to how these things work. So uh, stay tuned for that one. And I guess I have to start writing threads on Twitter and I don't know, scamming yeah. people on layer eight blockchain valuations. What else? Get me in the get me in the in the seed rounds. <laughs> the pre 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 sale. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't even know if I would want to be in any any. Like I think that generally is probably gonna be a bad place to be. I think a bunch of people are gonna make a bunch of losses. Oh, people are already getting fucked on private market valuations. Yeah, and stuff, yeah. yeah. Like I think that just how things have been launching, like even the stuff that that's been like anticipated yes i think there's gonna be there's gonna be quite a bit of pain on a lot of these private markets. it literally like, feels like unless you're either like a fantastic sh low time frame trader or you're a meme coin insider you just haven't been making any money in this market no no or bitcoin like if you help bitcoin <laughs> yes like le legit like if you've just been brain dead holding bitcoin you've made money <laughs> if you've been scamming everyone you've been making money <laughs> and uh i mean that's pretty much it <laughs> like that's straight up pretty much it which is wild to think about oh it's so funny but also so true that's it dom that's all that i've got any final yeah. comments questions concerns comments i said comments twice but maybe you've got two no i actually don't have one so <laughs> <laughs> god fantastic <laughs> well apologies for missing all the shows my family life is a bit of a circus but hopefully uh, that season, th this season of family drama is winding down. Thank you for all being patient and watching the show nonetheless. Thank you to Wu for supporting the show somehow. Hope you all have a wonderful week and God willing, we'll see you next week. Bye bye.